Cricks is led by Gorshade the Bastard. His battle group includes a stalker named Daddy Longlegs, aka Big Daddy D, aka Darnell, a slayer named Torment, Deathwalker, a Shrike, and Ripjaw. He also has Hellslinger Phantom, Bane Lord Tartarus, a Bloat Thrall, a Necrotech, a unit of Mechanith Thralls supported by two Brute Thralls and led by a Scarlock Commander, and a unit of Bane Warriors by way of Gorshade's feet. Crix chose the command cards Breakthrough, Careful Reconnaissance, Hit and Run, Old Faithful, and Power Swell. Scorn is led by Lord Tyrant Hexorus. His battle group includes a Titan Gladiator named Kuros, a Razor Worm named Fred, and a Cyclops Savage named Agon. He also has Abaddon the Keeper, Hakkar the Destroyer, and Extolan Novitiate named Eurus, a unit of Immortals led by an Extola Advocate named Ahmed and a unit of Paingiver Beast Handlers, Moss, Salak, and Rabar. Scorn chose the command cards, Careful Reconnaissance, Infiltration, Power Swell, Put the Fires Out, and True Inspiration. Scorn won the starting role and chose to go second. Special thanks to the Delaware War Machine crew for the challenge coin used as our first player marker. We played a variant called Scenic Steamroller, designed by Thomas and Dessa O'Neill. A link to the variant is in the description below. For terrain layout, we set up buildings in the center of the table to represent the abandoned town of Merrihaven, and use nature-based terrain on the outside surrounding the town. Rolling a D3, two pieces of terrain were selected to be scored. Two objectives were offset in the center of the town. The central objective could be scored by units. The eastern objective can be scored by warjacks and war beasts. The objectives represent stockpiles of ammunition, spare parts, and other various supplies that both sides are fighting to control in preparation for the inevitable battle with the invading Orgoth. Hellslinger Phantom and the Bloat Thrall were deployed to the left, with the Mechanothralls advanced deployed in front of them. Gorshade was deployed to the right, along with Bane Lord Tartarus, Deathwalker, a Necrotech, Torment, the Ripjaw, and the Shrike, with the Stalker advanced deployed in front of the Slayer. Scorn was deployed in three separate formations. The Immortals were on the left. Abaddon, Hakkar, and the Novitiate were in the center. And lastly, Hexorus was on the right, with the Cyclops Savage, the Beast Handlers, and the Titan Gladiator with the Razor Worm advanced deployed in front of Hexorus. As the Orgoth continued to push further inland, word reached the nations who had so far benefited defensively from not being on the shoreline, but that benefit was now seemingly withering away day by day. Rumors of a number of abandoned stockpiles in Merhaven led both Crix and Scorn vying to raid the town to better arm themselves for the coming onslaught. As Gorshade's forces entered from the north, and Corporal Spirit scouting ahead reported a cohort of Scorn approaching from the south. Crix. Turn 1. A ghastly wail flowed from the Scarlock Commander, driving the thralls in his command towards the stockpile of weapons and ammo.
the Phantom drifted eerily around the large stone tower. while the bloat thrall somehow scurried up the ladder, its awkwardly thin legs defying all odds to carry its swollen body to the top overlooking the town center below. Sending his warjacks forward, Gorshay directed all four into the opening between the two stockpiles of supplies. The necromancer then moved closer to his cohorts and covered them in a dark protective mist. Deathwalker kept pace to stay near her master as Tartarus moved through a pine forest to enter the town square. Lastly, the Necrotech moved carefully around the Crixian Warcaster, not wanting the Warjacks in his care to advance too far ahead of him. Um, excuse me, sir. Scorn. Turn one. Heavy footsteps echoed through the abandoned town as the Obsidian Warriors marched towards their prize. Keeper called out a dark incantation and watched as the immortal's physical bodies wavered in the early morning sunlight. While the novitiate maintained a close but respectful distance from the exalted champions, Hakkar took his place next to Abaddon. On Hexra's command, Kuros felt a rush of energy coursing through every sinew of his being. The Titan then ran towards the second stockpile. The razor worm slithered along next to Kuros. Spiny growth burst forth from the worm's carapace before the hideous creature dug into the earth. Agon ran to the front of the smaller stone tower. The Lord Tyrant then moved cautiously behind his advancing line and reached his hand out towards Agon. The savage felt his very soul gripped even more tightly in Hexorus's command. Channeling his mortithurgical enchantments through the Cyclops, the Scorn Warlock sharpened the combative skill of his immortals. And sent a surge of agony exploding into the closest Mechanothrall. Salak cracked his whip, sending his pain givers towards the tower, unsure which of the beasts would need their guidance the most. Cricks. Turn two. Gorshade amplified the vile magics flowing through two of his bone jacks and ordered them to strike out against the scorned beast moving towards the heavier stockpile. With the Titan Gladiator in his sights, Donnell leapt into the air, bounding over the supplies to land in the face of the mighty Titan. 
Both eviscerator blades dug into Kuro's flesh, but neither did significant damage. The Shrike charged forward, its wings of rotted flesh and skeletal mechanica batting heavily as it flew into the face of the razor worm. The Scarlet Commander sent his thralls to swarm Agon. The Mechanothrall's attacks were deflected by the Cyclops' blade, but the Brute Thralls both hammered their heavy steam fist into the War Beast. Though the Immortals in Corporal State protected them from the Thralls, the Scarlet Commander pierced the nearest Immortal Sacral Stone with his Fell Spear. The Ripjaw and Torment each moved towards separate stockpiles. The Necrotech stayed close to the Slayer, while Tartarus closed in on the central supply stash. After getting a closer look on the unfolding scene, the Eldritch Warcaster sent a blast of energy to Hex Abaddon. Akar and the Novitiate were both caught in the vile eruption. Calling them forth from the grave, the Necromancer raised a group of undead warriors to do his bidding. Gorshade then sent the Banes to continue loading up the ammunition and weapons the Mechanothralls had previously secured. Deathwalker staggered up behind Gorshade. With no targets in range from his elevated position, the bloat thrall clambered down the ladder on the south side of the tower. Hellslinger Phantom moved to support the bloat as both looked to flank the advancing scorn. Scorn. Turn two. Seeing their brother cut down before them, the rest of the immortals lashed out, seeking vengeance against the closest brute thrall and Scarlock commander.
After drawing in the furious tension aching inside his beasts, Hexrus released the Cyclops from the soul-slaving enchantment, but used his great power to push the Immortals onward into battle. The vampiric warlock then recited an ancient rite, taking dominion over the dead, and soon to be dead, as darkness fell across the battlefield. Charging into the first brute, Hexerus drove Golgotha's blade through her chest, tearing through flesh and bone with violent efficiency. As the Thrall was slain, the scorned warlock took command of her body. Controlling the brute like a puppeteer with a marionette, the Lord Tyrant forced her to hammer the other hulking Thrall with a heavy steam fist. Hexerus then cut down a mechanothrall nearby. As that lesser thrall fell, Hexerus took control of it, turning it on the second brute thrall. Mortithurge plagued torment with a parasitic curse. Next, Abaddon cleaved into the last McKenna thrall. Once more, Hexerus took command of that fallen thrall, turning it on to the second brute, who easily blocked the feeble steam fist blow. Eurus repaired the majority of Abaddon's damage. Hexerus then commanded the Immortals to push the carnage further into the town square. In turn, the last Brute Thrall and two Banes fell to their blades, each time turning on their former allies under the Lord Tyrant's control. Inspired by the guidance from the Extola Advocate, the Immortals found their resolve strengthened further. Salak's beast handlers moved to repair Agon's wounds.
Two of them stitched his wounds and medicated the Cyclops Savage. while the third prodded at the beast to enrage him. Aegon barreled into the ripjaw, slashing across its mandible with his falchion blade. Urged on by Hexorus to attack again, the Cyclops' blade swung wide. Leaning on his future sight, Agon attempted to right this error, but failed outright in the end. The Razor Worm moved closer to the small tower and bit into the Shrike's torso, driven by Hexorus to amplify the ferocity of his attack. Kuros moved to unleash the full fury of his rage onto the bone jacks that dared to stand in his way. His tusk pierced through the Shrike's furnace, extinguishing the necrotic fire burning inside. The Titan followed up by pummeling the Stalker with his war gauntlets leaving the spidery bone jack laying in a heap of shredded metal. Hekar moved to protect the Lord Tyrant from the expected Crixian retaliation. Crix. Turn 3. Gorshay had unleashed a wave of the Dragonfather's power into his two remaining warjacks. Torment's damaged Mechanica found itself repaired instantly as the dark energy coursed through the Helljack. The fire in Ripjaw's necrotite furnace was stoked and its eyes glowed an unsettling deep blue. The Necrotech rushed to Ripjaw's side, working to repair the damage to its mandible. Drawing on the power granted to it by Gorshade, the Ripjaw tore into Agon, giving an extra measure to the gory display. As the Cyclops fell, Hexorus both cursed the loss of his war beast and felt his physical body invigorated by the agony released. Steadying himself to aim, the bloat thrall flooded Salak in a deluge of toxic sludge. The caustic muck splashed onto several of the scorn nearby.
the Phantom raised both Ray Storm pistols with Hakkar in his sights. Firing a pair of incendiary rounds into the legendary Exalted Warrior did little damage, but did serve to plague the Scorn Warrior as flames erupted on his armor. Tartarus cursed the immortals before the ghostly figure charged into Hakkar. Bearing the blade of Rivener into the obsidian warrior's forehead. The Extoler Advocate scurried to salvage Hakkar's sackle stone, as his death saw another Bane warrior raised in Tartarus' control. Striking rapidly, the Bane Lord slashed his great axe into Abaddon, severely wounding him. Gorshade moved closer to the fray and blasted the immortals with a hexing curse. Three of the exalted were caught in the explosion, but only one found his stone body destroyed. As the Advocate captured the Sackle Stone, Abaddon was all but determined to exact revenge. Drawing on his necromantic knowledge, Gorshade empowered himself to protect against any possible retaliation. Deathwalker moved to keep stride with Gorshade, before the Slayer turned to claw into the remaining Immortals. The Helljack's Death Claws made quick work of two of them, Torment then gored the Extoler Advocate with his tusk. Abaddon found his resolve once more emboldened in seeing his scorned brethren slain before him. The Bane Warrior's war axes struck the fallen immortals, but their blades did little against the enemy's hardened stone forms. Scorn, 
turn three. Hexrus brushed the corrosive slime off his armor and pulled in the pain and tension that had built up inside his remaining beasts. The Lord Tyrant then sent his razor worm burring around the tower, erupting from the ground in the faces of the Necrotech and Ripjaw. Hexorus drove the worm to bite into the Necrotech with such ferocity, the macabre mechanosurgeon was severed in half within the great beast's razor-sharp teeth. Puros charged into the ripjaw. Though his initial war gauntlet strike was deflected, the Titan Gladiator shredded the small bone jack shortly after. The remaining immortals struggled to stand, but stand their ground they did, cutting into torment with their great swords. Infuriated by the chaos the Bane Lord was wreaking on his forces, the scorned warlock drove the blade of Golgotha clean through Tartarus' chest. And felled the Valkyrixian champion with a second blow immediately after. Turning his blade on the Slayer, Hexus nearly separated the Warjack's right arm at the elbow. The Novitiate communed with Abaddon's spirit driving him into a rage. The exalted warrior then charged in and pledged the blade of his greatsword through the Slayer's cortex, destroying the Helljack instantly. The last of the beast handlers, Moss, worked to medicate the wounded worm, though he wasn't able to offer much help. Cricks. Turn four. The bloat once more steadied his fetid, swollen body before belching a deluge of toxic slime onto Hexorus and several others nearby, both friend and foe.
the Hillslinger cracked off two incendiary shots into the warlock's chest. Gorshade rallied the remaining Banes to swarm Hexrus, his commands making them nigh unstoppable in their quest, though none of their blades managed to strike true. Deathwalker approached Abaddon, and as she drew closer, the assembled Scorn felt a tightness in their chest and struggled to breathe. Gorshade moved around the weapon stash, attempting to bring the fury of Blood Cleaver down on Hexorus. Despite being wounded, the Warlock managed to parry the first blow. Gorshade tried twice more to cut down the Mortar Thirds, but each time he channeled the pain to one of his War Beasts. Scorn. Turn 4. Hexorus and Abaddon suffered in silence, but the caustic muck had done too much damage for the immortal to withstand. Hexorus batted out the flames on his armor. The scorned warlock once more fueled his own being, absorbing the agony welling inside his beast, along with the spirit of his fallen Cyclops Savage. Old Freddy moseyed on over to Gorshade and attempted to bite the Warcaster, who easily defended the attack. The beast handler healed what he could of Kuros' wounds. Hexorus closed the distance with Deathwalker and brought the blade of Golgotha down upon her, decapitating the foul soulless fiend. He then slashed the blade across Gorshade's chest, rending armor and flesh with equal ease. Eurus emboldened Abaddon's resolve. 
but the Keeper found his blade piercing only the ground as the Crixian Warcaster parried the blow in an exhaustive effort to survive. The Lord Tyrant entered the mind of his Titan Gladiator and sent the beast charging into Gorshade. Once more, the Necromancer deflected the initial attack. But as he was spun from the impact, he felt the blade of Kuros' other war gauntlet plunging through his side. The devastation of the assault finally cut the bastard down, giving Scorn the victory and claim to the supplies, but at a heavy, heavy cost. <laughs>